AMA, a, not a rebest AMA yeah, to be exact, but a resonate AMA about the resonate protocol. And today we are here with Rob from the Rewest team. And this is going to be an AMA which we can also uh, answer questions as well. So if you have any questions, make sure to write them on the hashtag Rewest AMA on Resonate channel. This is pretty self-explanatory. So we are with Rob and he will guide us through the Resonate pools, guide us through how to use the app. And if you guys have any questions, he will also be there to answer as well. So welcome, Rob. Thank you very much. That is incredible timing. I just got back from getting coffee. <laughs> Glad that I was able to make it online. Great. Fantastic. All right. So good to be here, everyone. Been a little while since we did this. Resonate is now live. And I am here this morning to share with you about its operation. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. And okay. also we've got message. The recording is also started, so we can just fully go right now. All right. So how do we want to kick this off? What's the agenda? OK, so at first, I think, Rob, uh, you can explain what Revest is with just small sentences here and there. Then you can dive into resonate what you guys actually do. What are the what can the protocols as partners expect from Resonate? What do you guys bring to the table? Then use us how to use the app, how we can connect with the app, etc. So uh, the stage is yours. Everything is set for you, waiting for you to uh, enlighten right. us about Resonate and Revest. So let's begin with Revest. Many of you guys already have some experience with our our, uh, I suppose you would call it engine, base layer. Oh, what Revest is, is it's a financial NFT engine. And, okay, what do those words mean? That's, that sounds like a lot of buzzwords there. Well, we'll start with financial NFTs. A financial NFT is a normal NFT, but it represents a financial position instead of artwork. So, uh, stock, oh, not a stock, like bonds, loans, um, Investing packages, options, what we've got here, which is almost an interest rate swap and or factoring. At NFTs, they can be used to represent those positions quite well because those positions are unique and therefore it doesn't make much sense to represent them with fungible tokens. So uh, Revest is just a system by which we can set up any FNFT for any protocol. It's something you plug into as a dev, and it lets you create custom FNFTs with custom locks on top of them. Those locks can be based on time, they can be based on the value of the underlying assets, or they can be based on any arbitrary set of parameters triggered by a contract. So, we call that the address lock. What we've done with Resonate is, after we built Revest, we realized pretty quickly we need a flagship for this system because we built an engine, not a business to customer product. And we, we experimented with a few POCs, uh, the stuff we did for you guys in Liquid Driver, that's actually our premier proof of concept for Revest, is showing how we can take the elements that compose Revest and apply them to a protocol's needs. You know, set up a product that fills a niche that somebody needs and uses an NFT to do. So that was quite successful. We had a really good time with that, but we knew that we needed a flagship system, something that would really showcase what Revest can do, bring it into the public mind, and also offer a real revenue-based uh, value add. And that's Resonate. So Resonate is a system by which, if you have a token that could be to a yield farm, you can bring us the token and we will give you, we'll match you up with somebody more accurately, who will give you almost as much as you would get if you deposited in a yield farm up front. How does that work? You give us the tokens, you deposit them into our in a Resonate system, and then Resonate gives you the upfront payment immediately. So right now, for example, there is a Spirit Swap hosted pool that is offering 6% upfront payout on a pool that is currently only pulling down 5%. 
Uh, I'll get to that more later because that pull is expected to pull down around seven or eight. But this is one of the advantages of Resonate is that it allows you to just, you can get more than the pool is currently pulling in because people who are offering that expect the pool to pull down more later. You can not have to worry about what happens with the pool. So you bring the tokens to us, we pay you out up front immediately. By matching up with that person who's willing to make that upfront payment, and your tokens get locked into a principal bearing FNFT. So is everyone with me so far? Yes, and I have some comments to add on that. I think the concept of time value of money is very interesting and it's, and it's uh, going to be used in DeFi by, by a lot in the next few years because when you think of it, uh, getting instant returns on the assets, the LPs, the tokens, that's uh, something that's kind of new. Also in our Phantom ecosystem, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's, that has to be the first one, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm mistaken, then... <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is uh, the concept is being uh, adopted uh, very in the I think it's in its baby stages right now. The time value of money, adding that to DeFi, it's been uh, there in the CFI, but in the traditional finance, but in the DeFi, in DeFi, I haven't found that many examples. So actually, users being able to get instant returns on their assets and the other users the, the the issuer and the purchaser which we'll get on to that in a bit that two uh parts of people you connecting those two different types of uh people is very interesting and some people can just get free apr because of the time value of money they give their money now and get a yield later and other people can get instant returns so th there are just two sections which is the boosted yield and we have the, what was it called? Let me just quickly check. The boosted yield and the instant yield, yeah. So that's yep. kind of great because it, you just uh, change the concept of yield to two parts. Whenever a user chooses, they can just get them. So I think that's pretty cool. And that's pretty underrated right now in the space. Exactly. The idea being that you take a look at what you expect the value of the pool to, to return. So in this case with Spirit Swap, we're expecting this USDC MIM pool will be pulling down around 7 8%. If we look at the time value of money of that, it's around, I think, 6%. And so Spirit is offering right around 6%, which is ever so slightly less than the actual time value of money that that pool offers. Oh, well, what does that mean? That means that, you know, if I have a time preference for having my money right now and I'm willing to, you know, forego having a little bit extra down the line, then I can get my money up front. And now I can avoid fluctuations in the pool. I don't have to think about what that pool is going to be doing. I don't have to keep an eye on it to determine if I need to rotate my, uh, my crops, if, <laughs> if you'll use the term. I don't have to think about what's happening to the rates. I don't have to worry about what's happening to the tokens that are powering the emissions on that pool. Uh, that's a common reason that pools, that yield decreases on pools. I don't have to worry about the dilution of that pool. I don't have to be an extremely highly informed participant in yield farming because the person who's offering me that upfront rate, they've already factored in those terms. They've already sat and thought, okay, what is the most likely outcome for this pool going to be? and they base the rate they're willing to pay me on, so that they're going to win, and so that I'm going to win without having to constantly monitor things and be aware of everything going on and constantly adjusting my own approach. So it's a very, it's an ideal situation for people who don't want to have to monitor their yield farms on a daily basis, or for people who have opportunities that they could engage in during the time of the lockup. This is the other element that we haven't talked a lot about. So if you have a bunch of MIM USDC, but you also want to play with Spirit, well, you could sell that MIM USDC for Spirit, or you could lock it up into Resonate and get some Spirit and go out and, you know, play the game with that Spirit. And now you can sell that Spirit at the local highs, buy more Spirit at the local lows, and genuinely, you know, you can pursue these two opportunities simultaneously where you're realizing the gain from that yield farm 
And you're also being able to use the gain from that yield farm to power your pursuit of other opportunities the entire time. But I think that it's enough talk. We should probably go ahead and share it. Before I get into that, I wanna ask, are there any questions about how the system works? I'm gonna give a detailed breakdown once we start looking at the pools. But before I do, anything I can explain. Let's wait for if there are any questions from the community. Also, I want to add something. Uh, there was a small misconception that I realized from the previous uh, AMAs that you joined. Uh, some people thought that they were actually giving up those LP tokens, but no, you, they're just actually locking it up. So you guys are not giving up those LP tokens for the yield right now. You're just locking it up as an like, no problem. Okay, you guys still hold the possession of those. It's just uh, locked for a certain amount of time. No, for example, if it's 180 days, you can just do whatever you want after 180 days. So you guys, no need to worry about anything. We probably need to make that pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, Imagine you lock, you lock up your stables for a year, you get 6% returns right now, and then you get your stables back in a year. That's it. Yeah, you can even exactly. Sell during the course of that, if you wanted to say, say we get halfway through and you're like, oh man, I really need to have some liquid LPs, some liquid money. Um, okay, so you go to the uh, PainSwap and you use PainSwap's FNFT marketplace they're building for us to, uh, to list it at, you know, say $98 because it's $100 worth of LPs. You list it at 98 And someone who sees mm -hmm. that is like, oh, I can buy 100 bucks for $98? Sure. So they pick it up. You've got back to a uh, you know full liquid. You got slightly less yield than you would have because you wanted to exit early. You only ended up with four percent ROI rather than a six percent. But hey, you're still back to full liquid. So yeah, yeah, you're not losing your LPs. <laughs> it kind of resembles what's uh, what are bonds and maturity dates in the traditional finance, I believe. Like you can exit yeah. your position early, but only with a discount. Exactly. Yeah, you, you get it. This is good. Yeah. good. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up and we'll start yeah, down so, the path. Uh, guys and gals, we can just watch the stream to see how the app is working. So we're going to start here on the front page rather than uh, you know, jumping right into the spirit pool. I want to explain to people how they get there and the two options they can do to use our system. So there is both the quick deposit method where you just say, hey, I want some yield. I have USDC MIM, and let's say I had 100, one of it. I, I don't have any USDC MIM right now, guys. We'll come back to this in a minute. So we click Find, and our algorithm runs in the background, and what do you know? There's the Stable Spirit Pool powered by Beefy. It's offering 6% upfront, <coughs> and like I said, you're actually getting more than the pool is currently paying out. Uh, we expect the pool to pay out around 8%, but currently it's only paying 5 So, yeah, you are, you are getting overpaid currently. <laughs> so you lock one USDC mem for one year, and you receive this number here. Oh, yeah, one USDC mem is not worth $1, by the way. I should add that. Um, one USDC mem is worth significantly more than a dollar because of how these equations work. So that's yeah. why it's this, it's, it's this <laughs> massive number. That's what's going on there. All right. So. Was well, there 16 million spirits <laughs> in the instant yield? I believe it was 60 million. It was a very <laughs> large number. Yeah. I was a little surprised at first until I remembered how V2 works. Um, Spirit V2 is. It's a fantastic system. It does use equations I think were derived from Solidly. And mm -hmm. Solidly's equations are, they, they produce some really, really high value LPs. So let's navigate our way on to the, the spirit pool. And to do that, we're going to go ahead, we're going to click on stable spirit. Oh, I should explain what I did. So that, that first one, that's our auto router. The auto router allows you to very easily and seamlessly enter our system without actually having to, you know, look through all the pools. 
But the pool list shows you the full details. It shows you, you know, the volume on the pools. It shows you the boosted yield rates. If they're available, it shows you the instant payout rates. In this case, we see Spirit has a 6% instant payout rate. It shows us what the underlying vault is powered by, in this case, USDC MIM. And what we can do is we, if we couldn't see this and we wanted to be able to find it, we choose to filter by pool token and there it is. So now we click on the pool, we're in the pool. This is the stable spirit pool. It's the one that's offering 6%. And as you can see, there's two orders on it. There are, they're both submitted by spirit. I believe one of them was actually their first attempt. So don't quote me on that. <laughs> Obviously one is a bit larger than the other. Yeah, it, the, actually, uh, the 320K, uh, the large one is our first order, large. but the second one, I am actually not sure. So maybe that's uh, another user, another regular user, or actually us, yeah. but I'm I'm very, I'm very fairly confident that the big one is ours. So <laughs> yeah. someone beat all to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big one's definitely you though. That'll take uh, yeah. $43,000 to clear. That smaller one, if I had $157 in this account, I'd go ahead and clear that now. But I haven't done any deposits of him enough lately. By the way, you got so, a question. Do smaller orders get matched up quicker? Like, for example, I just put $157 in. The, uh, the first order gets completely closed and the other one is still there. So the way that it works is it's a queue, right? Within the pool. Mm -hmm. And the idea is, is that this one will be filled before this one because this yeah. one was submitted. So if you see date queued 10.5, and then if you click this one, you see 10.6. And that yeah. tells us that this one's always gonna be the second one filled. If I were to create another boosted yield purchaser side mm -hmm. offer, then you see they would come in behind that. Mm -hmm. So first come, first serve for the purchasers. Exactly, first come, first serve. Yeah, So okay. If we go over here to the issuer side, and we can actually, the issuer is the person who's locking up their tokens and getting paid up front. And the purchaser is the guy who is paying out up front and receiving an FNFT that entitles him to all the yield generated by that position. So we take the tokens from the issuer, we lock them up in the underlying yield farm, and then the yield from that goes to the purchaser. So, what happens is we go ahead, we, if we mouse over this button here, this plus, you'll see that it instantly takes us to the issuer side, since there is capital on the purchaser side. If there were capital on the issuer side, it would take us to the purchaser side. And that's just encouraging us to do something that will immediately fill an order. So, all right, it looks like if we deposit $20, then we're going to go ahead and receive Immediate activation. I just realized that I don't think I actually have $20 in this wallet, so you guys will have to bear with me <laughs> while I go ahead and bridge. Yeah. Uh, slight, <laughs> slight dilemma here, minor, slight minor, problem. Minor technical, de minor technical, uh, <laughs> technical difficulties. Yeah, if Hold on. <laughs> this won't take long at all. I've got some stuff on, uh, I want to say it's Polygon. Actually, at the same time, we have some questions. Would you like me to ask them to you? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and answer the questions. During this, during this small technical problem. So Andy R asks that. Maybe someone already asked. Sorry if it was like that. I was out for a moment. Can the investment FNFT can be used as collateral in any protocol? I think he's asking about yes. the FNFT. The answer, so the answer is not right now, but in the very near future. We in the, just got back from Bogota. Very um, near future. Okay. Yes, we've made friends. Friends <laughs> who want to use the FNFTs as collateral and who are going to offer you loans on the FNFTs. <laughs> there might be some alpha here, but <laughs> I'll let you guys decide on that. Okay, uh, yeah, we yeah. have. Uh, would you mind if uh, I continue with the questions or is the please, process yeah. ready? Okay, so Atakan Intro to DeFi asks that How can it be possible for you to pay more than the current APY? I mean, it's possible, but isn't this just net negative for Resonate? Uh, so Resonate is, the purchaser is the one who's paying out, um, and the purchaser in this case is Spirit. Spirit has an understanding of how their own farms work, and they are confident that that pool will be reaching 8% returns. 
So they believe that they're not paying out at a loss because they think the average on that pool is going to be 7-8%. So um, Resonate, uh, sorry yeah. for interrupting, Resonate connects purchasers with depositors. They don't exactly put up a fee like we want to buy your tokens on a discount. We want to buy your, L not, not tokens, but the right to the yield of the tokens and LPs for a discount. So we connect those two. We aren't acting as those two. And yeah. also the, the belief of the purchaser is that they don't have the same time preference. That's the other angle here is it's not just that. No, it's not net negative. It's that they have a different understanding of the pool and they have a different time preference. So they don't care about having that spirit right now because they have a lot of spirit. But the person who's getting paid in that spirit, and yes, this payout is in spirit, they have the time preference that they don't want to have to worry about what's going on with that pool. They don't want to have to monitor it. And they don't want to have to, um, how do I put it? They don't want to have to wait. That's yeah, so the, the main thing there. So big protocols with big treasuries, uh, for example, spirit holds a lot of spirit. So they're probably going to be more calm in the sense of like, we can wait right now at the 5% to 6% API. We can just wait right now. And in the long run, we're going to be okay. That's the main mentality of purchases like that, I guess. Exactly. So they don't uh, have a time preference where they need to, you know, mm -hmm. okay. We're getting this moved. There we go. <laughs> Great. Uh, yeah, at the same time, huh. uh, at the same time, we have another question. If uh, yeah, hit me. Question: Can you explain what the boosted yield rate means for the people? Like what the number in the pools page? I think we can just turn if we can turn back unless the page crashes. What does the boosted yield rate means? Pulls working fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> Boosted yield rate. Oh, we're on Polygon now. I forgot I switched. Okay, we're going back to Phantom. So, what does the boosted yield rate mean? That means that the protocol or the purchaser is receiving this ROI on their upfront payment. In the case of Sphere, it's not displayed because, again, the current APR on that pool is lower. That's the instantaneous APR, not the projected APR. So two different things, but take Reaper Rotor, right? Reaper is offering a payout of, I believe, 5% oath on depositing into their granary vault for S Phantom X. And they are asking those people to stay locked up until they've received 7.5%. Okay, what does that mean? That means that they get a 50% ROI because they pay out five and they receive 7.5. So 7.5 over five is 1.5, 50% return on investment. That's make some quick math. Some quick math on the Ghost of Phantom Pass. It's probably around like 18.1, uh, maybe actually 18, but the UI shows a bit different. So that's the actual uh, rate if it was the boosted yield rate was 101%, I guess. Atacon, um, yeah, they're waiting for six percent. They're waiting for seven or eight percent. The the way these pools work is that I reported by Beefy. If we were to go to Beefy, actually, uh, let's go to MemUFDC on Spirit. And as you can see, this rate changes pretty much daily. It's all over the place. If we zoom out to one month, you'll see it's, if we zoom out to one year, you can see this rate is all over the place. It is not a fixed value. It rises and falls. And based on the data that we analyze, the average is around 8%. So that is where this is coming from. This only goes back a few weeks, I think. Yeah, August 30th. So based on the data that we worked over with Spirit, the average for this pool is about 3%. What does that mean? That means that when we look at this pool, 
we can anticipate that it's going to be paying 8% every year, not what its current immediate rate is, which is around 5.3 moving average. That's not the average that we base this off of. So instantaneous averages and the actual rate that Spirit expects to receive are two different things. So Spirit, based on their math, determined that pool is likely, they, they believe that pool will pay them eight, seven or 8%. Now, if you think that's wrong, you should take that 6% up front. Or if you want immediate payout, you should take that 6% up front. But that's how the system works. Is, does that follow? Like the, these rates are not set in stone. The, the, the 5% here is an estimate. Okay, cool. <laughs> glad, glad, glad we clarified that. <laughs> it's, so you uh, can actually... And it's not one based on uh, necessarily, you know, actual reflections of real world. You can take two sides actually right now. For example, if you think that the spirit has messed up, if you think that we messed up, go and take that 6%. It's all yours. If you think like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you think they screwed up their math. Go take the 6%. Go crazy. Yeah, guys. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <sighs> Though also, even if you don't think they messed up, if you want that 6% and you don't want to have to look at the pools, go nuts. <laughs> Yeah, Sir, it's on stables. You want one hundred fifty percent on stables? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no! <laughs> okay. I think we need to create like six volts <laughs> on top of on themselves, each other for one hundred and fifty percent yield <laughs> for a meme right, based EC pool. Doable. Uh, we can do one hundred percent APR on uh, on USDC. That's entirely doable. It's just insane and. You're insane if you try to do that, but it is doable. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. If that's what the customer base wants. <laughs> if people are willing, if there is a farm that is paying 25% APR on USDC or says it will, and people are willing to just take 10% on that, congrats, you've got 150% ROI on USDC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all what people are willing to accept. Yeah, Don't get me started on mommy. That stuff's yeah, gonna yeah. be cool. And that, <laughs> Jesus, that's alpha. Um, so let's go ahead and get our tokens before we get more sidetracked. Yeah. Uh, by by the way, what getting the doing? tokens uh, is you press a small button there. I think that was a small yes. button. Could you come back, please? Perfect. That that's the that's button right. to get the tokens. Yeah. Yeah. We need to make this thing a bit more uh, visible, more likely. Yeah, for sure. We're working on integrating a zapper widget so that you know you won't have to think too much about this. But for now, that is the button you click. So. Mm -hmm. You come over here and we went, we, the button took us to add liquidity, but we went and we clicked, you know, over to swap because we need to convert the USDC that we just sent ourselves. Oh, I'm, I'm connected to the wrong wallet. That makes sense. There we go. All right. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to convert this. Actually, we're going to convert $50 up to MIM. And you'll see we have, these are actually very well balanced. I'm mm -hmm. actually quite impressed. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. So I guess I haven't added liquidity yet, so we don't know how out of balance the pool is. Okay. You guys don't look too closely at my hardware wallet. <laughs> so... What we're doing now is we're getting the tokens that we're going to need to create these LPs. And the idea here being that, okay, this thing wants us to lock up USDC MIM. So in a perfect world, we just zap into it. And for those of you who know what a zap is, that's where we take the USDC, we convert it to USDC MIM automatically. We wouldn't have to do any swaps. We wouldn't have to do all these, you know, series of transactions. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we don't live in a perfect world. So... We go ahead, we come over here, and we're going yeah, to say, speaking, speaking of the perfect world, Rob, we have another question. Uh, in a perfect okay. world, probably Resonate would do this as charity work for free, but <laughs> we're not living in a perfect world. Of course, you guys need to 
have bread on the yes. table for your guy for yourself as well. So we got a question. If you guys only connect uh, purchasers and issuers, how do you make money out of this? Is there a commission rate? So we, yeah, there is a 5% fee on both sides of the trade. Mm -hmm. What we do is whenever someone enters the, uh, whenever someone gets paid out up front, we charge 5% of that upfront payment. So when I enter this, we're about to make some money. I'm pretty happy about that. Having to lock up my own, but don't. Uh, I think, I think, I think, stop, please, please, please stop, Rob. That's a variable pool, actually. We need to turn into a stable. That's a common. <laughs> we need to change our UI accordingly. So I think, yeah, that, that's the, that's the pool. You guys nearly got me. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. I appreciate that. It, it, it was close. <laughs> that was pretty close. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, so yeah, quickly, we're good then. I quickly intervened. <laughs> Dude, you saved the day. Thank you. So yeah, Cheers. <laughs> getting back to it, five percent on the upfront payment, and then whenever you claim interest, so whenever Spirit claims the interest in USDC MIM, they'll get that. We'll charge five percent on that too. And the u utility of this system is that Spirit gets to convert. You know, they get to diversify their treasury. Uh, they end up with some USDC MIM, and what they can do next in the two-stage process is because they got more USDC MIM than that spirit is actually worth on the open market, they can turn around and they can redeploy that USDC MIM to doing boosted buybacks of spirit. And the idea being that now, instead of you know bribing people in our USDC farm with spirit, they'll take the USDC MIM that they made from that initial system, and they will incentivize people to enter the spirit farm with USDC MIM. Mm -hmm. So they can basically, because you guys have so much more time than you know your normal retail trader, and because you're not you know concerned about the price fluctuations of spirit the way that a normal trader is, because you just have a ton of spirit and you don't have any opportunities with it, other than stuff like this. Well, that means that you can, you've got all the time in the world and you can sit there and you can use our system to grow your own spirit holdings over time. Mm -hmm. Does that so follow? This, yeah, so this actually gives treasuries more utility, if I'm not mistaken. Exactly. It allows the treasury to, be, to grow itself. And, Constant uh, to buy pressure, grow, in, increased exactly. buy pressure for the token, yeah. Exactly. So, we're going to go ahead. Here we go. We've got we, we're going to get some instant yield. <laughs> yes, we are. Going to go ahead and approve it. I am uh, I'm praying to God that Gelato has been doing its job, because if it hasn't, we're going to see a stale twop data, and I'm going to have to go poke around in Phantom Scan. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it looks like Gelato has been doing its job. Yeah. Isn't that great? <laughs> you love so we actually, what we, yeah, what we have is we have a TWAP on Spirit set up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have a price feed for the Spirit token that we are updating every hour on the hour. And mm -hmm. that means that Spirit is, you know, we can convert between the price of Spirit and the price of USDC mail very easily. Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. that means that now that we're we have committed to locking up eighty dollars just now, and we're going to be paid, uh, what am I getting? Six hundred and thirty-five spirit. So now that I've clicked that deposit button, everyone, so you're so you know what's happening. I'm locking up my USDC mem into an FNFT, and I'm receiving uh, six hundred and thirty-five spirit. The transaction has been successful. And if we head over here, we can see the details. So what's going on is we locked up into the, the beefy vault. Uh, yeah, into the beefy vault. We locked up our stable V1 USDC. And yes, there's lots of things going on in here. But you can <laughs> see at the end, we received 635 spirit. And the dev wallet, the, the fee wallet, made 24 cents. So Resonate has just made some money and I've just made 6% of spirit. So I'm pretty yeah. happy about so that. So that, that, that 33 spirit is the 5% that we talked about earlier. Exactly. That's the 5% and this is what was sent to me. 
We don't actually tell you about that. Basically, when we say here, you're going to receive. So whatever it says you'll receive on our UI, that is after the fee. We, uh, we don't want people to get confused. But if we go ahead and we reload the page, what you will see is that I have now got these FNFTs. And due to a graphical bug, the which actually showed up last night, we're seeing two of them. There's actually only one, I promise So you, I just the... doubled my LP stakes to resonate. <laughs> 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 Amazing <Yeah>. yield. <laughs> <laughs> but they're the same FNFT. It's just, for some reason, it's doubled up. You can see it's 1786 here, and it's 1786 here. These, these are identical. But really, we should be seeing one of them. We got four copies, since you know each LP is worth, I think, $20. And if we scroll on through, you'll see that we it contains our stable V1 AMM, USDC MIM. And it knows everything about this. It knows we got paid 6% up front. We can transfer them. You know, we uh, eventually will be able to withdraw them. But they don't unlock until a year from now. So October 19th, 2023. Which means we got a little bit of waiting to do. But we got paid spirit, so we don't really care about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's about it. We can go to, you see here, this position is decreased. Now it'll only take $39 mm -hmm. to clear the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So if someone else were to come along, they could clear that position entirely and begin activating the official spirit position. The person who holds this position, C4, uh, C C04, they just received an FNFT that entitles them to claim the interest on that USDC MIM as it accrues. Mm -hmm. And if we head over to my wallet, we will see that that one also has not updated. And I'm going to go have a, well, not long discussion, but need to tell my web dev to figure out why yeah. NFTs are uh, twice in one place and not at all in another. <laughs> a pleasant conversation between two colleagues. <laughs> hey, it's the first two weeks of operation. Yeah, of course, graphical of course. Bugs. Graphical bugs are the bugs you want to have. Yeah, uh, no. the contract ones are the ones you want to avoid and the graphical ones, oh. yeah. That is actually a fantastic segue to talk about security. We three. Yeah, why not? Let, let's continue with the security I'm aspect of so Resonate. I'm proud of how strong Resonate security is. We, uh, we had two audits and then follow-up audits to each audit. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, we had two follow-ups to one of the audits. We so had does that make audit. five total audits? Technically, technically five? Yeah, technically, yeah. yeah. Technically, I can't claim five audits because they weren't five separate audits, but one of them was a separate audit. So we had a Zelic audit, and we had a follow-up to the Zelic audit, and we had a BlockSec audit, and we had a follow-up to the BlockSec audit, and then another follow-up to the BlockSec audit, because we had to get an Oracle system audited. And I think we even had a follow-up to that. So we, we hit up our auditors an awful lot. We had a bug bounty there. We paid out about $15,000 in rewards to. Uh, Badger Dow's lead contributor posted a fantastic bug report that's basically an informal audit. You can see it on our, uh, on our, in our docs. And he got a nice pretty penny. We farmed it out to our friends at Pwn No More, security research for, firm out of Georgia Tech. And they passed it along to their White Hat network, who also claimed some bug bounties. And we paid those guys quite well for it. We had informally, informally, we had some of the uh, the guys from Y Academy, which is basically they're associated with Yearn. They're an independent auditing firm, uh, auditing cooperative. I think is the right term. We had them poke around our ERC forty six twenty six adapters because, well, we were building stuff for Yearn V two, and they're like, "Hey, oh, yeah, looks good." So we we had a lot of people look over this code. And I am very happy to say that by the end there, we were getting absolutely you know blank stares and crickets, which is exactly what I wanted. We uh, we're still committed to ongoing fuzzing. We're launching an immunified bug bounty in the next few days, and if you can find the code, I'll pay you handsomely to break it. Yeah. So for any, if there are any white hat hackers around us right now, you can just earn some easy yields again with Resonate. <laughs> they yeah, can come just on in. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we have an interesting question by Ibra. If I mispronounced your name, I'm very sorry. Uh, so Ibra says that if that spirit. So the answer to that question have... is if that spirit. 
just jumped, would it cancel any buy pressure from buybacks? No. No, not at all, actually. Uh, hold on. I can't answer the buyback question directly, but what I can do... Well, actually, I can answer that directly. Basically, that 600 Spirit, that's, you know, 6%. But Spirit here, in theory, they're getting 20% more USCC. So if this farm hits 8 and they're paying out 6, 8 over 6 is actually 30... What is that? 1.33? Yeah, 33.3333%. So in theory... Spirit's making 33.3% more USDC MIM than the Spirit is actually worth. So if they turn around and they use that for a buyback, that USDC MIM, then it's far more aggressive and impactful in terms of pulling out Spirit and applying buy pressure to Spirit than that paltry, you know, 6% is. And so I, say, I shouldn't say paltry because it's a fine mm -hmm. yield. It is a good yield on stable coins, and especially mm -hmm. because you don't have to worry about going down to a fantastic yield. But mm -hmm. the way that Spirit can do this, it's quite different than the way that, you know, us retail traders can do this because mm -hmm. Spirit, again, doesn't actually have to care about what the price of Spirit is doing. They just want to apply buy pressure to it. Mm -hmm. So what the purchasers need to do is they need to uh, guess an accurate rate the pool will be on. And if they don't do it, they are screwed. If they do it, it's all good. <laughs> exactly. That or their protocols and have an entirely different priority system. Though, in this case, that doesn't apply. It might apply if you were just trying to suck up LPs and get LPs locked. Um, then it would make sense to pay out even more than a normal user could. Because you have a totally different set of incentives. But, in this case, yeah, that, that, that does apply. Mm -hmm. So... What we have in hand right now is we have locked our LP tokens. We have received an instant yield. Uh, we have met some purchasers' orders. Some of that is shown on... Yeah, here is the FNFT. We, this is our position. And if you could just scroll up a little bit more, I can just show that the position... The, the boosted yield is now down to 333 spirits. It was around 1.2k, I believe. So... Maybe someone else also bought because we bought, we got around like 400 spirits. So maybe someone else bought at the same time with us. So <laughs> maybe. Entirely possible. <laughs> I think it was, yeah, yeah, it was, it was around what, 1.07? Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. It, it was at least 1k and we received around like 450 spirits. So it might also yeah. be, yeah. But I got a small question here. Uh, for example, uh, I want to be a purchaser. I'm like, okay, this is all good, but I need to wait until that 368k worth of order is matched and gotten out of the way. Uh, would you uh, think of creating a, a gate for the people who want to enter small? They just want to, like, for example, I have 5k spirit. I want to become a purchaser. Do I need to wait spirit swap to finish his orders all the time or... In the future, can we have something uh, special? I don't know how, but can we have it actually? What you do is if you wanted to do that, you create your own pool. Mm -hmm. And you can't create the same pool that Spirit's created because that 6%, only Spirit gets to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Only one pool per you know rate. So mm -hmm. what you could do though is you could say, okay, I want to create a pool that's almost the same thing as Spirit. So I choose USDC MIM. I'd say, okay, I'm going to pay out a front spirit. Mm. And we go spirit swap token. We go lock for one year. We go enter instant yield rate. And instead of six, maybe we say 6.1. Mm -hmm. And what that does is that would give us a totally different pool that we would have. It would be a blank pool. And it would be ever so slightly more appealing to a user who wanted to come in and take that position. Now, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that it would be it would rank higher in our algorithm. So remember I was talking about the quick deposit thing? Mm -hmm. If that pool existed and we had chosen, you know, USDC MIM, we'd chosen, you know, say one, and we found then it would find that new pool first because it's looking for the mm -hmm. highest initial payout rate. So mm -hmm. 6.1 is going to beat six, and our order is going to get eaten first, even though it's much smaller and came in later. Mm -hmm. But that so comes to the cost of us having to pay people more. Yeah, yeah. So unless you're rich on spirit like us, like our treasury, <laughs> you might just want to wait until our orders match, I guess. 
Exactly. It's a, it is a set of trade-offs that each user mm -hmm. has to determine. Do they want to this have, have this happen fast, or do they want to you know, have this happen ever so slightly cheaper? It's all mm -hmm. about figuring out where you fall in this, uh, this financial structure that we've created. Yeah, how you view the market, how patient you are. It's all about different potential choices, different potential consequences are also there for the different exactly. choices. Do you want to be safe? Do you want to take risks? What's your preference? Mm -hmm. Spirit, mm. this the spirit pool is great for somebody. It is fantastic for someone who doesn't want to have to take big risks, who just wants to get 6% up front on stable coins and mm -hmm. then chill. Mm -hmm. You know, go drop that st the, the spirit you got, go drop that in a spirit farm. You can now increase your yield even more on stables. You can just lock it as in spirit. You can vote on our farms. You can get bribes. So this is, this is great. <laughs> Exactly. This is great. Sell it, to, sell it to Liquid Driver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> well, why not? Why not? You can just get. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, this is very. We also have some LQDR guys in the ch uh, in the. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, d d d no worry. No need to worry. They're all our precious partners. So, uh, do we have any additional questions from the chat? We have answered plenty. Let's see if any additional question comes up. But it has been fun. It has been surely fun, this AMA. I've really enjoyed it. And I think, yeah. I think we've been able to explain it pretty well in potential scenarios where other people open a pool as well. That's also been talked we about. And the a greater deal of depth on what it can actually do, but we've gotten into a fair mm -hmm. amount of it. We yeah. went to one use case here today. But if you wanted to use this to incentivize LPs, if you want to use this to boost your stablecoin yields, mm -hmm. there's a ton of different things that this system can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah it's one, so one, good one. that it actually had to be uh, with another name. Like, think about it. <laughs> Not Revest, it's Resonate. It's something new when you think about no. it. It's, it's so just crazy and different that we had to mm -hmm. create it as a separate system. It would not have made sense under the Revest umbrella. Yeah. It's, <laughs> this thing, I, I don't know if you guys saw the interview I had with Juan a while back. He went out and he wrote us an article after that. Uh, and that was an amazing article. It's basically, he boiled it down so well into describing chain pain is done. Uh, right now, when we do LPs, right? Uh, here, here's a good example. When we do LPs, the way we do that is we do that with a prisoner's dilemma. And that's problematic because, I mean, I know you guys, y'all are all probably providing LPs for somebody. And when things mm -hmm. get tough, you pull liquidity and you run because you know that if you don't, you'll be the guy left holding the bag from IL. You're going to get front so, run. <laughs> Exactly. You got to you got to run quick. At the first sign of trouble, you got to stab the guy next to you before he stabs you. That mm -hmm. is a very negative cycle. That's a negative positive feedback cycle because it turns into a death spiral for a token's price when markets, you know, get hit. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. saw that last uh, May actually with several tokens in the Phantom ecosystem. <laughs> I, I know because I hold them <laughs> and it was painful. Um 30% of LPers pull and 50% of the price gets collapsed. But mm -hmm. with Resonate, if we pay everybody up front, okay, you know, we pay you say 30% up front, you turn around, you sell that 30% halfways to cover yourself against IL. And now the next guy sees the price has dropped and he's like, oh, I want to provide LPs and get paid up front. So he also comes in and he also buys the token and pushes the price back mm -hmm. up gets paid up front, sells the little next guy, and you end up with an oscillation, you know, as <laughs> these LPs come in, rather than, I don't know, just parabolic growth immediately. Once those LPs are in, now the token can grow. There's deep liquidity. Organically, yeah. And yes, and even better, the LPs now, they're locked. And they're faced with the prospect that if they're aggressively selling, okay, they're screwing themselves first off. But also, <laughs> if the market dips, they can't leave. 
they can't turn around and stab the other guy next to them Mm -hmm. because they're locked and he's locked. And so now rather than this really negative cycle where prisoners dilemma every man for himself, we've created a benevolent cycle where you can safely provide liquidity and be secure in doing so because everyone else is also locked up. And you know they're not going to be able to dump on you because their LP tokens are locked as well. You all mm-hmm. got paid up front. You've already made your profits. And now it's just a matter of hanging on to those profits and you know, seeing how the token performs, maybe taking profit at some point in there. But never, mm-hmm. you know, both dumping your rewards and dumping your tokens at the same time. Mm-hmm. So this actually makes provides a more organic growth and stabilizes the price. For exactly. Sure. So that's a totally different use of Resonate than what we're talking about here. But every time I start talking about Resonate, I just want to wax poetic about it. Yeah, I, I really like the fact that you're passionate about what you guys have done. It's really fun and really great to hear, really great to listen to. We put a lot yeah. of our time and love into this thing. <laughs> I'm sure, man. I'm sure. It's great. It's great. And we are glad that we have a partnership. As NDR said, he says that he really loves this partnership. <laughs> I'm sure the Resonate guys feel like that as well. So it's, it's been great. Deal. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you, man. It's been fa- it's fantastic working with Revest as well. So uh, if there are no more questions, we can just wrap it up. Thank you, Rob, for joining in. And thank you, folks, for again, joining in, asking questions, listening to us. I think we have been able to give out a lot of information today. It's been fun. It's been informative. It's been great. And me personally, I also was educated a lot during this process about how we can open pools. Maybe I can rival Spirit Swap as Okaro myself in the future but probably not <laughs> let's just light up a little bit of fire probably not <laughs> thank you guys for joining in thank you rob once again and we'll see you next time guys thank you Talk rob you anything you want to say uh you want six percent hop in there <laughs> great <laughs> okay you guys have a great one thank you so much for having me <laughs> see uh, you guys i hope you're all excited about what we're doing as we are Take care. Take care, guys. See you.